100 classroom games. In this video, I will say 100 games that you can use in your class. Questions on a topic. Visit the Etateach website to get 20 questions on 50 different topics. 10 for your students and 10 for you. Take turns asking each other these questions. I put the link in the description below. Shiritori. You and your student take turns saying words. But the catch is that every following word should start with the last letter of the previous word. Bus, steak, key, yellow. Continue around and around until someone makes a mistake. Compound words. Choose three to five compound words with the same stem and write them on the board or screen without their stem. Ask your student to figure out what the stem is. Paste. Ache. Brush. The stem would be tooth. Or ball. Man. Board. The stem. Snow. Here are some more that you can use. Two minute presentation. Write down random topics on paper strips or use a randomizing wheel. After picking a topic, the student has one minute to prepare and two minutes to do a speech on the topic. Remind them not to write a whole script but rather focus on the structure and vocabulary they want to use. This is great practice for public speaking in the future. Younger learners have a show and tell session. Ask them to bring his or her favorite toy, book or stuffed animal and they have to tell you about it. Make sure to teach them soft skills like body language and vocal tips to improve their presenting ability. Mixed up questions. It's always good to start the class with a question. Write a good one on the board, but mix up the word order. Then challenge students to reconstruct the question and then discuss it in pairs or small groups. Most item you have the ever expensive what's bought. Alternatively, write a question on the board, but this time scramble the letters of each word. To shi ryo. See you Lil Romi, A to Z game. Give students a theme. Jobs, things you take on holiday, food. Write the letters A to Z on the board. The student must race to write an appropriate word next to each letter of the alphabet. Name 10. Have students think of 10 items that fit particular criteria. Jobs where you have to wear a uniform. Sports that are played with a ball. Foods that contain egg. Animals that lay eggs. I am better. Start off by explaining the concept of one-upmanship. That some people always like to appear to be more interesting or superior to others in their company. Tell the student a relatively mundane story about something that happened recently and invite the student to tell a similar story but to top it in some way. Yesterday, I overslept and was five minutes late to class. The student can say, that's nothing. I overslept and was an hour late. An hour? I overslept a whole day. This is a really fun exercise to get their creativity flowing a day in my life. You and your student create a fictitious schedule of each other's lives. It doesn't need to be realistic. From 8 to 12, swimming with sharks. 1 to 5, training with the Real Madrid Football Club. 6, robbing a museum. Once you are done, the other person has to ask questions until they figure out what they are doing at that time. Am I in a dangerous place? Am I underwater? Shopping game. Both a teacher and student take some time to create their own snack shop. Make a list of items to sell and price them realistically. Each person gets $20 to visit the other shop to buy whatever they want. For more advanced students, shoppers have the option of negotiating the price. Secret S. The object of this activity is to answer questions without using the letter S. You and your student come up with five questions each that you can ask one another. Take turns to ask and answer the question. Whoever says an S first in their answer loses. Photographs. Take turns to share a personal photograph and explain what's going on. You can also ask follow-up questions to each other. An alternative activity is to find photographs online. Your student has to describe the photograph and you can discuss whether the picture is good or bad. You can even give a personal rating. This is great for practicing prepositions of where things are on a photograph. Dice conversation starters. Make a six-sided die that the students can use. Write a topic on each side. The topics can include things like hobbies, television, time, sleep, music. Interview with verbs. You and your student 
Both pick a different celebrity. Then write down 10 verbs. Take turns to interview one another, but you must include these verbs in the questions. Decide. When did you decide? Hate. What do you hate? Love. Who loves you the most? Debate. Write down 10 different debatable topics on slips of paper or use the randomizing wheel. Take turns to pick a topic, choose a side of the argument to support and share its merits. The other person now has to give their own counter arguments to defend the other side. Depending on your student's level, personality and cultural background, you can discuss anything from plastic surgery to drug addiction. Negotiation. In our daily lives, we often have to negotiate with other people. Explain how it is done with your student. Ask them for some examples where they have had to negotiate in their lives. Now practice these scenarios with your student. Parents and children, homework, dinner, bedtime, pocket money, household chores, staying at a friend's house, birthday presents. Sentence chains. Start telling a story with your student. Take turns to add a sentence to the story and see where it takes you. It's a good way to practice conditional clauses. Fortunately, unfortunately. A super simple game. No resources required and a minimum of just two players. One person says a sentence beginning with fortunately and the next person has to begin the next sentence with Unfortunately. Fortunately, it was Saturday and Mr. Dinosaur could sleep until 10 a.m. Unfortunately, his neighbors woke him up. They were having a water fight. Fortunately, they invited Mr. Dinosaur to play with them. See how long you can keep it up. Word ladder. In this activity, a word must be transformed step by step into a target word. To illustrate this idea, write the word run on the board and explain that the target word is fit. For each turn, only one letter can be changed. See if your student can find a valid sequence together. Run, fun, fin, fit. Most words. Pick a long word like apologize, dictionary or September. Take a minute to create as many words from that word using its letters. Do it with your student and see who can find the most words. Longest word. Write a topical word on the board or screen. For example, winter. Your student has to think of a new long word for each of its letters. Waterfall. Industrious. Nausea. Terrified. Empty. Retailer. Compete with your student, give a point to whoever has a longer word per letter. Agony Ant. Find some common problems people write to an Agony Ant section of a magazine. You can find examples for young learners, teenagers or specific to your student's career. Ask what advice your student would give to that person. Share a similar problem they might have faced and discuss alternative solutions. What's the missing word? Find a group of compound words or collocations which share a common word. Bedroom, bathroom, living room, classroom, showroom. Give the students one of the words or co collocation parts such as bed and have them guess the missing part. Add to the list by writing bath, living, class until they successfully guess the word. Scatter sheets are a great way to review vocabulary, introduce a theme and get your student talking. Brainstorm words connected to a theme, the seaside, London, marketing, and so on. Write all these words on a sheet or on the board. Once you have 20 words, take turns to pick a word and describe it. Once correctly guessed by the other person, circle it, and it's the other person's turn to explain one of the random words. Teacher robot. Pretend you're a robot and can be controlled by the voice commands of your student. Ask them to direct you to do simple tasks, such as making a sandwich, cooking an egg. Try and use relia to make it more fun. It's great for practicing imperative forms such as use, move, do, or time word connectors such as before, after, when. Spot the difference. For younger learners, spot the difference is a fun five minute game. Find examples on the internet, ask students to describe what they see, then find the differences. Make it into a speaking activity by encouraging your students to answer in full sentences using prepositions where relevant. Role play games. Great for keeping a younger student entertained and learning English. A role play game is a fantastic way to practice those all important functional language skills. The phrases we use for our day-to-day -day interactions. Ordering food, going to the doctor, traveling, 
problems. Guess the news story. Collect photos from news stories across the world. Let your student guess what it is about and what their headline would be. Then you can discuss the actual article and what they think about it. Post it mania. Bring a pack of post-it notes to the lesson or if they are online, ask a younger student to use some if they have. Give them a word to write down, then go and place it on the said word. Do this until you have labeled many things in their area. Think of someone. You and your student both make a list of 10 people you both know. It could be dad, mom, celebrities. Switch papers. Now pick a person from their list. They have to ask questions to figure out who you picked. Once they get it right, it's their turn to pick from your list and you to question them. Dinner party. On your whiteboard, write the names of any celebrities or well-known characters. These could include the Pope, Justin Bieber, a sumo wrestler, Hello Kitty, Harry Potter, Tarzan, a dinosaur, you, or whoever the hot topic is that week. You could also ask your students to call out different celebrities they would like to use. Once you've written down all these names, tell the students that these celebrities and characters are going to have a dinner party and it's up to them to decide who will sit where. I am hosting a party for these people. They are having a party. Because I am the host, I need to put them next to each other. They have to arrange the guests around a table giving reasons why they place certain guests next to each other. I want you to decide who will sit where. Mm -hmm. Who will sit where? And I want you to say why. So for example, you can say, I am number six and Ed Sheeran is number seven. We can talk to each other because we both like baseball. Maybe these two don't like each other, so they have to sit there. And I want you to write the names. Who will sit where? With your partner, quickly talk and decide. Once all the teams are done, they can do a presentation where they explain why they have decided on their particular seating arrangement. <laughs> Okay, ladies, okay. start off and explain to us why they're sitting there. Okay, one seat is Ellie because Ellie like, likes likes camera shows a lot. Ariana Grande sit here because she uses English and Jang Won Young's use English okay. and they talk. Excellent. Yes. And Sally sit here because she want took a picture with Jang Won Young and it posted stories, Instagram story, and Sally likes you just up to two. Ah, excellent, very nice. So when you do a presentation or speech, always either look or if you're talking to someone here, open up like this. Ladies, next up. Jang Won Young and Ariana Grande is pretty, uh. so they are center. S sitting in the center? At least Korea name is Bang Nare, oh. so their name is same, so. Oh. Sit next to each other. Yes. We won't meet Yu Jae Suk, so Sarah next to Yu Jae Suk and. Alice across? So you yes. Can both talk to him? Yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Dicta gloss. The teacher tells an interesting story to the students and they have to memorize it. You can read a story from a book or tell them an exciting experience from your own life. Next, place them in pairs or groups and let them retell the story using their own words. After that, you can break them up and make new groups and they have to retell the story in those groups. A good idea is to record yourself when you tell the story the first time, then replay the original version at the end. This is a fun activity because students practice their listening skills and they learn how to substitute different words while keeping the meaning intact. As a follow-up, students can tell a story to a partner and that partner has to retell it to a new group. What's different? Split the class into two teams, then line them up to face each other. Tell them to inspect the other team and make sure they notice all the details. Then one team turns around while the other team changes things about themselves. They can trade places, exchange jackets, 
untie their shoes, undo some buttons, switch their watches from one wrist to the other, whatever noticeable changes they can make. Once the other group turns around, they have to spot all the changes they can see. Count how many they've gotten right and then see how many they've missed. Then the teams switch. The team that noticed the most changes wins. Anagram. An anagram is a word or phrase that is formed by rearranging the letters of a word to construct a different word or phrase. Students have to find as many words as possible from the letters of a word or phrase you write on the board. Split the class into a few groups depending on the size. Each group picks a writer. Then write a long word or phrase on the board. Students have to make up new words using the letters of the word or phrase. Each writer takes a whiteboard marker to record the answers their team shouts out. Teams may not use the same words. The group with the most unique words at the end of the activity wins. For example, I love my teacher. Possible words, creatively, achiever, alchemy, cheerio, army, cola, come, mayo. You can give extra points for longer words. Small talk. Start by writing some topics for conversation on the board. Sport, movies, weekend, travel, Portugal. These are only as an example to give students a place to start from. Then place two pairs of students into a group of four. The first pair decides on a topic and the other pair has to discuss it with each other for one minute. The pair that picked the topic must make notes of the discussion in order to report back to the rest of class. You can change the amount of time depending on the level of your students. This is a great activity because you don't need to prepare anything and the learners pick the topics. This setup could be used with any number of students. A pair can decide topics for each other or if you have an odd class, Three students can take turns picking topics for one another. Things in common. First, place the students into pairs or small groups. Then, give them some time to discover interesting things they have in common with their partner or partners. They can talk about their hobbies, experiences, places they've been to, things they've done, things about their lives, their families, and so on. Students must find at least three interesting things they have in common. Once they are done, let them share their similarities with the class. This is a good activity because we should celebrate the things we have in common and not just focus on our differences. Countdown. Students close their eyes and count down from 20 to one, but only one person at a time can call out the next number. So they can count 20, 19, 18, 17. But when two students say a number at the same time, they have to restart. The starting number can be equal to the number of students in class. Once they say a number, they are done and may open their eyes. Scategories. Starting with the chosen letter, students have to think of words in different categories. Scategories is a fun activity that can easily keep individual students occupied, but I prefer using it with pairs of students to improve teamwork and camaraderie. After placing learners in pairs, pick five to 10 categories and write them on the board. Each team copies the categories on a sheet of paper. Then pick a random letter. Students have to write a word for each category, starting with the letter. For example, the letter C. They have to think of words starting with the letter C for the given categories. Country, China, animal, cat, vegetable, cucumber. Only unique answers score points, challenging students to think outside the box. In my book, 100 No Prep Classroom Activities, you can find 60 different topics for categories. I placed it in the description below. Expanding sentences. Write a simple sentence on the board. Then, one by one, ask students to add words, phrases, or clauses to the sentence so it gradually expands and becomes more complex. For example, Eric is a teacher. My brother Eric is a teacher. My younger brother Eric is a teacher. My younger brother Eric is a teacher in South Korea who loves sweets. My younger brother Eric is a science teacher in South Korea who loves sweets but lost all his teeth. Now that you've modeled the activity, place the students in groups to create their own sentences. You can give them a starter sentence or they can make their own and afterwards share their expansions. Who's the leader? 
This is a simple but fun game. To begin, pick a student in class to be the detective. Once the detective has left the room, the class selects another student to be the leader, which they have to copy. When the detective student comes back into class, he or she has to ask the class some questions to find out who the leader is. While he or she is asking questions and looking around, the class has to copy exactly what the leader is doing. If the leader crosses his legs, the rest of the class has to follow. If he raises his hands while the detective isn't looking, the class should follow. They secretly imitate the moves the leader makes. To confuse the detective, other students can fake making moves to hide the class leader. 10 memory games that improve active memory. There are a number of benefits for students when they play memory games. It sharpens memory skills, increases focus and concentration, reviews material, and increases motivation. In this video, I will share 10 memory activities for school. Action memory. Let's start with a fun one. Write the numbers one to nine on the board with a corresponding action for each number. For example, one is left step, two right step, three turn, four left arm, right arm, down and up, turn left, turn right, make a heart. You can use whatever action you want. Start slowly and call the numbers. One, two, five, six, three. The students have to do the corresponding action. If a student makes a mistake, they sit down. The winner becomes the next one to call out the numbers instead of the teacher. Total recall. Having a good memory isn't just about how much you can remember. It's also about improving your ability to recall what you're trying to remember. And like with any skill, you should practice to improve it. Here are a few variations of total recall activities. In the description below, I put an image with 25 different objects. You can print it out or show it to your learners on a monitor. Let them look at it for 30 seconds, then take it away. Let them write down everything they've seen. It's also fun to get the students to work in pairs. Memory maze. You could also draw a grid of dots on the board. Let your students copy it on a piece of paper and then put down their pencils. Draw a path connecting the dots together. Once you give the signal, they have to copy the exact path you traced. Students can also play with a partner where they have to take turns to draw and copy a path. Memory match or pairs. The purpose of this game is to find a set of cards. Lay them out. Students take turns to reveal two cards. If they match, the student keeps them. If not, turn them back around. The student who finds the most pairs is the winner. If you don't have pair cards, use a deck of playing cards. Sequence master. By practicing the skills of putting things Things in order improves memory. Place five random items in a sequence. Students try to remember the sequence before you cover it up. Now go around class with them naming the sequence. If it's too easy, increase the number of items. You can also do it with a deck of cards. See how far they can go without making a mistake. Sequencing can also be done with coins. If you have different coins, lay them out and a student has to reorganize them in the correct sequence. Make a word list. Keep one as the master file. Get your students to cut out individual words, show them the master list for 30 seconds, then they have to rearrange the list in front of them. Dictogloss. Tell the students a story. They have to to retell it in a circle. It challenges them to get the gist or big picture instead of focusing on every small detail. An example of this is a trip to the market. Write a story about a trip to the market. Include all the food items you bought. Then read the story to class and see how many items they remember. Students can also sit in a circle and tell a story. Each one adding a sentence or detail. So the first student starts by giving one sentence. The second one repeats the first sentence and adds their own. First, you can play with everyone correcting one another. But the version I like is where no one is allowed to help. It's fine if they make small mistakes. See how the story evolves. It could be a good idea to place a limit on how many times the story is allowed to go around the circle. You can also do this with categories. Students go around and repeat a fruit, adding their own. See how many they can say before making a mistake. Apple, apple banana, apple banana strawberry, apple banana mango, eyewitness. Have you ever been an eyewitness to a crime? Is your memory of the crime the same as other people's recollection? Here is a way to explore eyewitness memory. Plan to have someone, a teacher or another student, 
come into your class. Let's call this person X. X should plan on doing several things in class such as change the time on the clock, take a book, and put it in a bag. Erase the chalkboard, close a window, talk to someone about something. Before X comes into the room, have all the students working or reading at their desks. When X comes into the room, most of the students will be curious about what he or she is doing. After X leaves the room, have the students write down all the things that happened. You can do this immediately after X leaves or sometime later. Once everyone has finished writing, find out what everyone remembers and what they did not. What details do they recall? What did X wear? How long was X in the room? What book did X take? Who did X talk to? What did X say? You may even ask some leading questions to influence memory. For example, if X was not wearing a hat, ask what color hat was X wearing? Let students write down what they saw. Compare how everyone's memory was the same and different. Group memory. Tell the students to take a good look around the room. Then ask them to leave and line up outside for a couple of minutes without looking inside the class. You move or swap things around class. Remember to take a note of what you moved. Perhaps make it a nice round number like 10 things. Once the students return, ask them to tell you what 10 things have been changed in class. This is also something you can do with two teams. One team leaves and the other stays inside to change things. One person on a team is allowed to change one thing in class. It should be something noticeable. The second team returns and tries to find all the things that have been changed. Team switch. The team that has found the most changes wins. A variation is where both teams face one another. Team one turns around and team two changes things about their appearance. Undo buttons, swap jackets, take off a shoe. Team one then turns around and tries to notice how many changes the opposing team had made. False memories. Sometimes your brain makes up its own memories. Try to implant a memory by asking people to remember the words on list one. Wait for about five minutes, then probe their memory by asking them which words on list two are also on list one. Did they say book was on list one? No, only pencil and school were on list one. You can also try it with these words. Only pillow and dream were on list one. Make up your own lists and see how you can create a false memory. Memory master. Memory master quizzes students on what they see. Students stare at a picture in a magazine or a children's book for 60 seconds. After time is up, quiz the students about what they can remember. For example, if the picture was an ad for food, you might ask, what foods are in the picture? How many of each type? What colors did they see? The winner is the player with the best memory, the memory master. Solo games. Here are some memory games you can teach your students to play on their own to improve their working memories. Say the alphabet backwards. Spell your full name backwards. Memorize four details of people you see in public. For example, let's say someone is wearing a black hat, has blonde hair, a triangular ring, a green sweater. Make a list, grocery items, things to do, or anything else that comes to mind and memorize it. An hour or so later, see how many of the items you can recall. Speaking of lists, making of words students know is vital to improving memory. Students can make lists of anything. Boy names starting with B, girl names starting with M, all the fruits they know, words that mean small, all the breeds of dogs. This is similar to the categories game you can watch next. Three phase charades. Each student has to write a different word on five slips of paper. It can be any word noun, name, thing, but it has to be something that everybody is supposed to know. Fold the slips in half and add them all into a bowl or hat. They will reuse the slips for three phases. So tell them not to tear or destroy the slips when they take them out. Then divide the students into small teams. They will play charades in three phases. Phase one, one member from each group get one minute to explain the slips of paper in the bowl. After one minute, it's the next group's turn. Continue until all the slips are taken out and change explaining students with each turn. Then each team counts up how many words they got correct. It doesn't matter if it's a word someone wrote down. It's the luck of the draw. Return all the slips back into the bowl or hat. Phase two. 
One member from a group has to explain as many slips as possible in one minute. But this time they may only use a single word. If they accidentally use more than one word, they fail and it's the next team's turn. If their group doesn't guess correctly, they may not pass and take a new slip. Tough luck. Phase three. One member from each group has to explain the slips from the bowl, but only use actions, no words. Each team gets one minute and they continue until all the slips are taken. At the end of the activity, tally up the scores from all three phases to find the winning team. Vocabulary Cowboy Duel. Select two students to come to the front of class. Hand each one a flashcard or paper with vocabulary on it. They should place it against their chests without looking at it. Then the two students stand back to back with their flashcards held against their chests. The words also facing forward. The teacher counts down. Three, two, one, and turn. Both students then spin around and show their flashcards to their opponent. The first one to read the other's flashcard wins the duel. Make it fun by telling the students to dramatically die if they lose. You can split the class into teams. Each winner gets a point for their team. The team with the most points wins. Draw a card. Playing card games can be used in many ways, but in this case, students talk about daily activities to learn everyday actions. First, take a normal deck of playing cards. Next, write 13 daily actions or household chores on the whiteboard. 13 for each card in a suit, from number two to ace. You can write things like brush your teeth, get dressed, do the washing, hang up laundry, sweep the floor, wash the dishes, make the bed, take out trash, take a shower, cook dinner, eat dinner, walk the dog. To end, designate each corner of the classroom a different suit. That corner is hearts and that's the kitchen. That's diamonds and that's outside. Spade is the bedroom and club the bathroom. Spread the cards on a table in the middle of class. Students have to pick up a card and then go and act out the activity in the correct corner. Ask students to tell you what they are doing. The ace of clubs, I'm walking the dog in the bathroom. Wow, that's very strange. Make a list. Students have to think of eight essential items that are needed for some situations or items. You can write it on the board, take some suggestions from your students. For example, a suitcase for a three day trip, a fridge, a picnic, a survival kit, going on a date, a beach, doing a presentation, a school bag, going hiking, things for a baby. Then in small groups, they've got to think of eight essential things needed for that item or activity. For example, if the item is a handbag, what are eight things a woman needs in her handbag? Her wallet, driver's license, lipstick, hand cream, candy, money, and wet tissues. Or if it's a situation like going for a job interview, do research on the company, dress formally, take a resume, take a notepad, arrive early, be polite, answer questions confidently. Once the groups are done, let each group give feedback and compare. Draw a monster. Pick two students. They go to the whiteboard to draw a monster according to what the rest of the class tells them. Guide the class by asking questions about the monsters. How many eyes does it have? How many arms? How many legs? Is it hairy? Does it have spots? Is it tall? Is it short? Big? Small? Let them select the color and draw the monster according to the class's suggestions, making it a collaborative monster. Then place the students into smaller groups which picks one of the monsters. They need to give it a name and create more information about it. What does it eat? Where does it live? What is it scared of? They should make a fun backstory for the monster. Warn them not to get too graphic, however, since it's a friendly monster. Group storytelling. Split the class into groups of four students. Write a sentence on the board. For example, there was an old lady living in a house in the forest with her granddaughter. Each student then describes a different part of the story. 
The first student describes the old lady. Who is she? What does she look like? What does she do? Student B describes the house. What does the house look like? How many rooms? Is it big or small? Student C describes the forest. Is it a big forest? Is it dark? Are there flowers or animals? Student D describes the granddaughter. What is her name? What does she look like? What is her personality like? What does she do at the house? Then continue with the story. One day, a young man knocks at the door. They have to finish the story, each student adding one sentence until it's complete. When it's finished, place all the students into new groups where they have to retell the story they have created with their old group. Hot seat. In this activity, teams must explain words to their friends, taking turns to sit in the hot seat facing them. This team exercise is very popular with younger learners, but can get rowdy if not controlled. Remind them that points will be deducted if they shout too loudly. Place students into teams and put a chair for each team in the front of class facing the students. These chairs are the hot seats. The teacher then writes vocabulary words on the board which teams have to explain to those in the hot seats who have to guess what the word is. You can either use the same word for each team or give them different words. The first one to guess the correct answer gets a point. Rotate team members so that everyone gets a chance. I like giving the students one word per team member. Then it's a race to see which team can finish first. Dinner party. Who sits where? This activity comes from Kev the Rev, a teacher who often shares ideas on our live stream every Sunday at 1 p.m. GMT. For this activity, place the students into groups of three or four. Hand each group a blank A4 paper. On your whiteboard, write the names of any celebrities or well-known characters. These could include the Pope, Justin Bieber, a sumo wrestler, Hello Kitty, Harry Potter, Tarzan, a dinosaur, you, 007, or whoever is a hot topic that week. You can also ask your students to call out different celebrities they would like to use. Once you've written down all these names, tell the students that the celebrities and characters are going to have a dinner party, and it's up to them to decide who will sit where. They have to arrange the celebrities around the table, giving reasons why they place certain guests next to each other. You can also draw a circle or table on the board with numbers all around, so students can easily write where the characters will be seated. They should be mindful of what the guests will be able to talk about, why some will enjoy each other's company, and why others should sit far away from one another. Once all the teams are done, they will have to explain why they have decided on their particular seating arrangement, if things were different. This activity gets the students to think out of the box to create an alternate history for a famous person. Place the students into groups. Then they have to think of a celebrity they know and write a list of what that celebrity has achieved in their life. It could be a sports star, a singer, a politician, anyone that's really famous. Walk around and make sure that each group thinks of a different person. Once all the groups are done, let them report back to class about their celebrity and his or her accomplishments. Write the names on the board so that you can see who they've picked. The second part of the activity is for each group to think of an alternative history for each celebrity. What would have happened if something different took place in their lives or if they didn't achieve something? Note that not every alternate history has to end in disaster. They could just have become something else. When all the groups are done, they report back. Give a reward for the most creative or well-explained history. Make sure that each student in a group gets a chance to explain something about their celebrities' alternate history. Interview with verbs. This activity trains students to use different vocabulary in an engaging way. They choose a famous person they would like to interview, and the person doesn't necessarily have to be alive. Advise them to choose someone they admire or know a lot about so that they have more material to talk about. Place the students in pairs. The one is the celebrity, and the other one, the interviewer. Write 20 verbs on the whiteboard. They must each then use at least 10 of these verbs to create questions for their partner. For example, decide. When did you decide? Hate. What do you hate? Who loves you the most? 
What can you offer us? What do you prefer between? Why did you move? Who won? Can you continue with? What did you buy for? Can you wait for? Did you consider? How did you change? These are only example questions. Students must create their own. Mayor, don't vote for me. Explain that you're going to have a mock election for mayor in your classroom, but it's a job nobody wants. Each student must convince their group and the class that they should not be mayor and they should give reasons why. So let your students think of all the reasons why they shouldn't be voted for as mayor. It can be something like, I'm very lazy, so you don't want to pick me. I've got the worst handwriting. I would be a powerful dictator and I would take your lunch money. Whatever reasons they can come up with, let them write it down and then they have to share it with the class or in smaller groups. This is the opposite of the deserted island activity I explained in another video, where students have to explain why they have to stay on the island. In this activity, they should give reasons why they shouldn't be picked. If you have a large class, put the students into smaller groups where they have to explain to the rest of the group in one or two minutes why they shouldn't get picked. Then go around the group. Once they are done, they should vote on who should be mayor. The losers in all the groups then come to the front of class. They explain again why they shouldn't get picked as mayor and then the class votes. It's a fun activity because students don't have to take themselves seriously. Try it in your class. Jeopardy. Instead of answering questions like a normal quiz show, students have to answer in the form of a question. Each card has a word with a point value. You create five categories and each category has five answers or questions with harder cards as a higher point value. You can create your own categories related to whatever topic you are teaching that week, or you can use this one I have found for you. Place the students into groups. Each group gets a chance to pick a question. Turn the card over or write the answer on the spot. The group gets a chance to answer in question form. If they make a mistake or cannot answer, the other groups have a chance to try. So capitals, London, what is the capital of London? Cheetah, what is the fastest land animal? Sushi, what is the national dish of Japan? This is a great game that you can use with a variety of categories and it's all up to you. Labyrinth, write words on the board with start and finish on opposite sides. Pair students up or create groups. Each turn they get to say one word. If they are right, they can continue. If they make a mistake, they go back to the start. That way, this game stays competitive throughout. Cat, bear, oh, sorry, wrong, you need to go back. Cat, rain, friend, oh, sorry, you need to go back. Students love this game. The first team to reach the end wins. It takes zero effort, but can help students learn vocabulary and practice reading, or just waste some time. Timeline. From the start of human civilization, we remember some of the most famous people and inventions. Using this timeline worksheet, students arrange the timeline according to their birth date and the invention here. First, practice with your students. Draw a timeline on the board, January to December. Then ask your students their birthdays. Write it on the board at the correct date. Explain to your students that they now have to complete the timelines. First the timeline for famous people and then the timeline for inventions. Hand them these worksheets and in pairs or groups let them fill in where they think these dates go. From earliest to oldest go through the correct order of the history timelines. For example, paper was invented 1300 years earlier than the printing press. The teacher then helps everyone by giving them the correct answers. You can continue and ask the students other questions about the people or the inventions. What did Alexander the Great do? What is he famous for? What is Albert Einstein famous for? What do we use the printing press for? Why was it so important? I've shared the file and correct order in the description below. Next, let students create their own timeline. It could be about a celebrity, themselves, their school, 
country or a company. Einstein's Riddle. Einstein's Riddle is a challenging detective style activity where students have to use logic to solve the nationality, pet, drink, color and hobby of each homeowner. It's been accredited to Einstein and it's said that only 2% of people can solve it in their heads. Luckily for you, I put the worksheet in the description below. Using logic, they figure out who lives where, what they drink, their pet, their color and their house. For example, the Norwegian lives in the first house. The owner in the middle drinks milk. Students continue until they complete the whole worksheet. This activity works for students of most ages and usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Once a student is done, tell them to turn their papers over and continue other work without giving the answers away. After most of the students are done, you can go through the answers by asking the class. Multi-purpose items. First, show the class an object, any object. Next, Give them a couple of minutes to think of all the different uses for that item. After about five or six minutes, the teacher asks students to share what they have come up with. For example, you can use a fork to eat food, to comb your hair, open cans, mix ingredients, clean pans. Not so bad for a simple fork. The multi-purpose items activity encourages creativity and it's fun to hear what they come up with. Once they are done, place students in groups. Each student gets an item they have to sell to the rest of the group. First, do an example so that they have something to work with. Rhyme time. Place your students into groups. Next, hand out the rhyme time activity sheet. Now bring out your stopwatch and get your students to think of as many rhymes as possible for each group. Finally, the group with the most rhymes wins. Then each student should create their own individual poem using the rhyme words. Time, spine, work, core. You can also teach them about rhyming patterns first and show them how poems are created. Pictionary. Students can draw words or phrases. So put the students into two or three groups, give each group a word, and then students take turns to go to the front, draw the word, and then their friends have to guess what it means. Draw an idiom. Cool as a cucumber. Hold your horses, kick the bucket. I put a list of common idioms in the description below with their meanings. Cut them out and separate them from the meanings. Next, give them to your students. A student picks up one of the idioms and draws it. The other students have to guess what it is. After they get it right or if they give up, ask them to guess the meaning. We did this at a Korean language exchange I attended. English speakers would draw Korean idioms and then guess the meaning. And Koreans would then draw the English ones. We would guess them and then explain the meaning to them. It's a great activity and a useful way for your students to learn about English idioms. So a student picks up a card, cool as a cucumber. They draw it out, just like Pictionary, and the other students have to kind of figure it out and guess. Once they get it right, they can guess what it means. You can also take the idioms and the meanings and mix them up and then try and figure out which idiom goes with which meaning. My superhero. Each student has to draw their own superhero. Give that superhero a name, strengths, and weaknesses. After they've done that, they can share their superhero to class. This is an easy activity. All you need is a piece of paper and the students to draw and use their own creativity to create a superhero. These superheroes can also be used in future activities, perhaps like an Avengers meetup where you tell students to group up and they've got to create a story that they role play. Or you can use it for creative writing where students have to write their own story. It's also fun because I know a few students would like to be villains instead. Hangman. Hangman has been a fundamental game in teaching English. Students have to guess a word or phrase. You create a number of dashes equal to the number of letters in the word or phrase. Students then have to guess letters of the alphabet. If it appears, you write it. 
in at the correct dash. If they make a mistake, you start drawing a hanged man. You start with the head and then the body, the arms and the legs. This has been a mainstay for many teachers because it's a quick and easy game to play with your students and they understand it well. They also don't want the man to be hanged. The idea behind hangman can be a bit gruesome. So here are some alternatives that you can use instead. What about disappearing snowman? Draw a snowman on the board and each time a student gets a letter wrong, then part of the snowman melts until there's nothing left. Or you can try the mouse and cheese game where the mouse is trying to make it up the stairs to some cheese. You can come up with your own variation, but make it fun and challenging for your students. House, tree, sun, animal, water, psychological test. Tell your students to draw a picture. In the picture, there should be a house, a tree, a sun, an animal, and water. Do an example for them or show them an example of what it should look like. Give them five minutes to finish. Once they are done, next tell your students that actually psychologists use this as a psychological test for their patients because when we draw we use our emotions and our personalities. So each item actually represents something in their lives. You are the house. The way that the house is shaped, the roof, the windows, the door, the walls, if they're strong, it shows what you are like as a person. And perhaps you can take that first picture and explain to the students how you would analyze yourself. The tree is your mom. What is your relationship with your mom? The, the branches, how big it is. Is it close or far away from the house? Sun is your dad. How close is your relationship? Is it big or small? Is it bright? Does it look friendly? Does it look scary? Whatever animal it is, is connected to their friends. How do they see their friends? Water represents money or career. How do they see themselves work with money? If it's a big lake, if it's a, if it's a fast stream, how can they analyze it? This is obviously just for fun and tell your students that. Tell them this is just a fun way to kind of analyze their personalities. Once they are all done with their pictures, you want to take their pictures and then redistribute them to the class. Oh yeah, by the way, tell them not to write their names on the paper so that the person who gets their picture doesn't know whose it is. Then give the class a couple of minutes to kind of look at the paper and then psychoanalyze it. Once they are done, put them into groups and they explain what they think the person is like. You can reveal the artist for each picture and then also talk about whether they think that the picture reflects their personality. 100 conversation topics. I put a file in the description below, join the email list and you get it for free. Students can do these in pairs or in groups. Each person picks a question and asks their partner. First, you have to prepare the students by doing an example. So ask a question and draw answers from your learners. Let's say the topic is breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You would start by asking what some traditional breakfast foods are or what do your students eat for breakfast? These days, many families skip breakfast. Don't they think it was perhaps good for families to come together before starting their day? It's always funny when you watch an American movie or TV show. The mom creates this huge breakfast only for the dad to rush in and say, oh, there's no time. We're late. He grabs a piece of toast. Everybody in the car. And then everybody rushes out without eating any of the food except for the toast. My mom would have killed us if we left so much food on the table. You get your students in a conversational mood by asking them these questions. Also remember to practice conversational skills by asking them follow-up questions or getting them to share their opinions with class. They should make up their minds and be able to explain their reasoning. Distribute the paper with the conversational questions to the groups and let them 
practice it with each other. When they are done, they should give you some feedback on what they talked about. It also helps if you give them a number of topics they have to cover and an amount of time. For example, you can say, I want you to do at least five different topics and it should take 10 minutes. That way they know how much they should cover and they can just give answers for too short or go on for too long. When they are done, they have to give feedback on what they talked about. This is important because it shows students that they have to practice and remember what they talked about. So you can either ask them what they discussed or learned about a partner or get them to do one of the conversations in front of class. Once done talking about the topics, get your students to practice debates by taking opposite sides of an argument. This is a great way for your students to practice speaking. We use this thing when we have a sleep. Toothbrush. Now, have a sleep. You sleep in it. this place. This bed. Nice. Hot seat. Students have to explain a list of words to their partner. I want you to explain to Jackson and you can explain. If he doesn't understand, pass. But you've got one minute. Okay, are you ready? Three, two, one and start. This is good uh, Pikachu. Okay. Nice. Next. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 you can go like this. Oh, Big TV. You can also do it in groups where one student sits in the hot seat and their group explains the words to them. Pick one card and explain to him. It is we use when we go to bed. Oh. Go to sleep. Oh. Ebook. Ah, uh, close. What is on the ebook? One more, one more. We use this thing when we have a sleep. Toothbrush. Now. Have a sleep. You sleep in it. this place. This big bed. Nice. The students can take turns to be in the hot seat and explain all the words or cards to their partners. You can see who gets the most answers correctly in five or so minutes. I am good at this subject. Math. Yes. Good. This is teacher, a boy teacher and <laughs> he is a... Hopefully. No, he is teacher, English teacher. Eddie. Yes. <laughs> I raise this animal. Cat. Yes. McDonald. Rotary. Okay, okay. Nara likes color. Draw pictures. Car light color. Right. Blue. Like bird leaf. What? Bird leaf? <laughs> leaf. Bird leaf. What? And what. blue. Bird, bird blue. Sky <laughs> blue. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. You. Jawanya with what? Take picture what? Instagram story. Okay. Instagram. Okay, okay. Daily routine of my photo friend. Find a large magazine photo of people at work. Next, write a simple daily timeline. Model for the class by selecting a photo and describing the daily routine of your photo friend. Each learner picks a photo friend. Give them time to write down an action their friend does during that time. Place the students into pairs and they describe the daily life of their photo friend. Movie lines. Pick a short, high interest, level appropriate scene from a movie or TV show and write down a few key lines of dialogue. Ask students to read the selected lines and assist them with the intonation, stress and meaning. Play the scene once, ask them to listen to the lines, ask additional questions about the setting, the situation and the emotions of the characters. Play the tape a second time 
stopping after each model line to discuss the pronunciation, stress and intonation. Now ask the students to say the selected lines just like the actors. Once they are confident, let them practice the scene with a partner to act it out. The essentials. Write down some topics or situations on the board. Ask students to write down eight items that are related to the topic or are required for the situation. For example, write down handbag. What are eight things a woman needs in her handbag? Or if it's a situation like going to a job interview, now write down a few ideas on the board and place the students into groups. For example, packing a suitcase for a three day trip, going on a date, going to the beach, doing a presentation, interview with verbs. Students choose a famous person they want to interview. I tell students to choose someone they admire or know a lot about because then they'll have more material to talk about. Give each student a list of 10 to 15 verbs. Instead of asking the normal interview type questions, they have to use these verbs to create questions for their partner. Decide. When did you decide? Hate. What do you hate? Love. Offer. Prefer. What do you prefer between? Move. Win. Continue. Buy. Wait. Consider. Change. Surveys. Surveys are when students have a list of questions they have to ask one another. They walk around class and ask one question per partner. That way they interact with many different students and get to know each other. If you need questions, I wrote a book with 1000 questions for English learners. I also have a free Word document with 250 conversation starters and a questions board game that you can get when you join the Etiquette email list. Describe a picture. Find a large picture of a specific setting a city, a park, a kitchen, and several people engaged in a variety of activities. Show the picture to the entire class and ask each student to say something different about what is happening. Get the students to talk about the people, what activities they're doing, or make comments about the setting. What do they see? After you have modeled the activity, place students into small groups and hand each group a different picture. Now they have to write down as many things they can say about the picture as possible. A follow-up activity could be to create a role play, one minute speeches. First, teach your students how to structure a speech or presentation. They have to have an introduction where they talk about what they're going to speak about, the body, maybe three topics they want to talk about, the conclusion where they can do a quick review and thank the audience, and then a call to action telling the audience to do something. Ask your students to give you more topics for one minute speeches, write them on the board, and then each student should pick one. By limiting it to one minute, it takes pressure off of the students to talk a lot. They lack time, which also means that they have to speak quickly, which increases their fluency. There are two alternate activities that you can do when it comes to giving speeches. Expert activity. Each student picks something they are very good at and teaches the class how to do it step by step. It could be anything like fishing, playing a computer game, studying, playing piano. Because they are talking about a strength, they gain confidence by teaching others and also share something about themselves. Another similar activity is to get students to talk about a topic for two minutes. Their partner has to retell the story in 90 seconds and the third student in one minute and then 30 seconds. Just the facts. Find a level appropriate text in a newspaper or online. Make sure that it includes a lot of information. Write a question sheet for the text with five to 10 questions. Pre-teach any necessary key vocabulary. Before handing out the questions sheet, read the text aloud at a natural pace for learners to get the main idea. Read the text aloud a second time while learners listen and write down the answers. Read the text aloud a third time for learners to check their answers. Number 10. Expanding sentences. Write a simple sentence on the board. Ask students to add a word, a phrase or a clause 
to the sentence to gradually expand and become more complex. For example, Eric is a teacher. My brother Eric is a teacher. My younger brother Eric is a teacher. My younger brother Eric is a teacher in South Korea. My younger brother Eric is a teacher in South Korea who loves sweets. My younger brother Eric is a science teacher in South Korea who loves sweets but lost his teeth. Now that you've modeled the activity, place the students in groups and they create their own sentences. Let them share it with the class after. Line game. First, ask the students some normal questions. What's your name? Where are you from? What's your favorite color? We will play the lying game. The lying game. Kojima. Then, show them examples of how to lie. If I ask you, what is your name? You have to lie. You have to say, my name is Superman. My, my, my name is Superman. I like reading books. No. I like swimming on the moon. Place students in pairs and they have to ask each other questions and the other person has to lie. Let's try it again. What's your name? My name is Chloe. Chloe? Um, <laughs> what is your favorite toy? Favorite toy is Nintendo. <laughs> really? <laughs> What's your name? My name is Crystal. <laughs> Crystal. What is your favorite animal? My favorite animal is... Huh? Fox? Yes. Okay, my favorite animal is a fox. What's your name? My name is... Nomi. Nomi. Crystal. Okay, Crystal, what is your favorite... What is your favorite food? Soup. Okay, not bad. What's your name? My name is Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> we have two Chloe's. One, two Chloe's. Wow. And what do you like to do? I like to play me. Huh? Where? In space. In space. And finally. What's your yeah. name? Skydiving. My name is Jaden. Uh, Jaden, what is your best friend? It can be an animal, it can be a book. My best friend is a what? My best friend, uh, friend is a uh, hamster. Hamster. A fun way to trick the students is by telling them that you will ask them five questions and they have to lie with each one. So. Uh, pick a student and say, okay, I'm going to ask you five questions. Oh, what color is the sky? It's red. How many eyes do I have? You have five eyes. How tall am I? You are 700 feet tall. What number are we on again? And they like, then they have to lie. Sometimes they say, oh, we had number 1000. You're like, oh, you've played this game before. And then they usually forget they play about the game and they say, no, I haven't. And then you say, pa, 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 got you on the last one. Line up. Ask your students to line up next to a wall. They then have to arrange themselves according to whatever you tell them. For example, you can tell them, I want you to rearrange yourself according to your height. I want you to change from short to tall. So short this side, tall this side. Change. Five, four, three, two, one. Another rule is alphabetically according to your names. If it's A, that side. If it's Z, that, that side. Uh, your English name is okay. English name. English name. English name. Your English name. 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 English 
So your name is? Chloe. And your name is? Karina. Karina, Karina, you're before Chloe then. And? Crystal. Yeah. Crystal over there. According to your birthdays. Okay. My birthday is March 18th. I want you to ask your friend, when is your birthday? When is your birthday? And then I want you to stand from January to December. February 18? Yeah. When is your birthday? My birthday is April 18. Not bad. August 15. August 15? <laughs> My birthday is December 28. 28? And you're 16? Yeah. You have to change. <laughs> oh, guys, you have to ask questions. Your telephone numbers. What is your phone number zero one zero what is the next number my phone number is zero one zero four eight okay four eight what is your number five three five three six and seven good zero one zero eight nine eight nine Excellent. Okay, okay. You, Jawanya, read what? Take a picture what? Instagram story. Okay. Instagram. Okay, okay. Charades is an ESL staple activity. Students have to act out words while their friend guesses. A fun way to do it is in three turns. I want you to write down anything. It can be a banana, it can be a food, it can be a table, it can be a person, but it should be something everybody knows. The first round, students pick up a slip and explains it to a partner. The partner gets it right, they keep the slip. They do that for one minute and then it's the other team's turn. We are teams. You will explain to your partner for one minute. We will take turns. So one, two, three, four. Okay, okay. You, Jawanya, read what? Take a picture what? Instagram story. Okay. Instagram. Okay, okay. So turn one, they can explain the words. Use up all the slips of paper and then put it back into the hat. Turn two is only acting, no words. So they act out the words and then see how many answers they get. Round two, I want you to act out the word. So it will be easy because you know all the answers. <laughs> Raymond, a hamburger. What? Ah, turn three. By now, all the students know what the slips of paper are. By turn three, they can only use one word. To try and describe a slip. Uh, the team with the most points at the end wins. The final round, you can only say one word. Oh. Flute. Mm. Pepper. <laughs> Subject. Math. Wow. Cloth. Clothes. Skirt. Ooh. English. Eric. Three, two, one, and go. Flower power. Place the students in groups. For each group, draw a flower on the board. Place letters in each flower 
and in the petals. Students then get one minute to write down as many words as they can using those letters. After a minute, they stop and then count up how many points they have for that flower. Teams then switch flowers so that each team gets a chance to write down for a different flower. If you have too many students in class, pair them up, give each a paper which they have to use to write the words down. Let them cycle through the flowers. For example, teams one, two and three use flower one. When all the teams have completed the words, tally up the scores and you can give a point for each word. Or like categories, only distribute points for unique words. I will give you one minute. I want you to write down as many words. Maybe I will give you two minutes. Two minutes with your partner using these words. I want you to write as many words as you can. Okay, I will give you two minutes. Are you ready? Three, two, one, and go. Wow, time's up. Hi, come in. Okay, and stop. Okay, excellent. Okay, everyone, take a seat quickly. Take a seat. Okay, let's quickly see the numbers. Can I quickly borrow? Wow, Emma. Let's see. This one, no M. Can't use M. Apple, no L. Sit. No I, so you have to use everything here. Let's see this one. What is this one? Oh, okay. here we go. Tap. Tap is okay. Stop. T, no E. Sat is okay. Good. Then here, what is this one, uh, Dean? T. A N. A N. Tan. Sure. Pit. Uh, I think the one I showed you was maybe plant you know mm. p l a n t right okay ladies son right you can also say nose yeah or you can say rose mm. okay but uh, store i think is also very good Spelling tic-tac-toe. Draw a big tic-tac-toe grid on the board. Make two teams and assign a board marker to each. One person from each team comes to the front of class. Give them a word to spell. First one to write it out correctly gets to place an X or an O. Each team only gets either three O's or three X's. Once they've placed all three, each round after that, they place it in a new spot until someone wins. Spelling word relay. Here is an energetic spelling game to play with large classes. Divide the students into teams. Each team stand in a line in front of the board. Hold up a flashcard or a picture of the word you want the teams to spell. The first student in each team runs to the board and writes the first letter of the word. The student then runs back to their team and tags the next person who runs back to the board and writes the next letter and so on. If a student makes a mistake, the next student can correct it, but they cannot write another letter. The first team to spell the word correctly scores a point. Play several rounds. The team with the most points at the end of the game wins. Back draw. Arrange the class into teams of equal size. Have the teams sit down in rows facing the board. There are two actions that the students need to know before playing the game. Tapping the shoulder means to repeat the spelling. Nodding the head means okay, continue. Show a different word with the same number of letters to the students at the back of each row. That student draws the word letter by letter on the back of the person in front of them. If the student in front of them knows the letter, they can nod their head. If they are unsure, they can tap their shoulder so that the student can rewrite the letter 
on their back. This continues until the word is complete. Then the next student draws the word onto the back of the person in front of them. When the word reaches the person at the front of the line, the student stands up and writes it on the board. The first team to spell their word correctly scores a point. The student at the front then moves to the back and everyone moves up one space. The game continues with a new word and so on. Make sure that each student gets a chance to write the final word on the board. Blind speed spell. Divide the students into four teams. Invite one player from each team to come to the front of class. Give each player a marker or chalk and have them put on a blindfold. You can perhaps use a face mask to put over their eyes. Have teammates stand the players a meter or two away from the board. Say a word you want the players to write out. The players then have to find their way to the board and race to spell the word as quickly as they can. You can also have the players spin around a few times beforehand and have their teammates direct them to the board. The first player to spell the word correctly in a readable format scores three points for their team. The second player scores two points and the third player scores one point. A new player from each team comes to the front and the game continues with a new word. Continue the game until everyone has had a chance to play. The team with the most points at the end of the game wins. For higher level students, you can give them sentences to write. Spelling bee. Little kids can participate in a spelling bee game without the pressure of competition. This elementary spelling game is for young learners. One student is the bee and buzzes around the room while the other students chant, buzz, buzz, spelling bee, you can't sting me. The bee stops behind a desk and the teacher gives that student a word to spell. If the bee spells it correctly, he or she sits down and the new student is the bee. If the bee gets it wrong, the whole class spells the word out together. Continue until every student has had a chance to spell. For all the students, a spelling bee is a classic game to review words from vocabulary lists. Divide your class into two teams and let them line up. Give one word at a time to each student, alternating teams. If the student spells the word correctly, she goes to the end of the line until her turn comes up again. If she spells the word incorrectly, she sits down. The last team standing wins. Students who are eliminated must play along by writing out each new word called Invisible Man. Split the class into two or three teams. Draw a stick man for each. Call out a word for the first member of the team to spell. If they spell it correctly, they may erase one body part from the other team's stick person. Then call a word for the next team. Continue until only one team stick man is left. Teams can also challenge one another by asking them to spell out a word. They can create their own list of words so that you don't have to. They call out a word for the other team to spell. Group spelling. Students stand in a circle. One student says a word. Going around the circle, each student adds a letter to spell the word. Whoever makes a mistake sits down. You can also do something similar with a ball. Students sit in a circle. Toss it to a learner who calls out a word then tosses it to another student to spell. That student finishes and tosses to someone else. Word jump. Write words on paper plates. Call out a word and the first student to step on that word wins. You can also place paper plates on the ground with letters on. Call out a word and a student hops on the letters to spell it out, like hopscotch. Spelling bingo. Students write out 10 words. Write the alphabet on the word. Each time you cross out a letter, students cross out that letter on the word in their list. The first person to have all their words crossed out wins. I will steal the first question. At the zoo, what is your favorite animal? <laughs> I steal the easy question. Questions board game. It is important for students to practice asking and answering questions in English. To make it easier, here is a questions board game. Learners take turns asking questions. If they are a group of four, one rolls a die to land on a topic 
and the other three have to formulate and ask them questions. Make sure to review how to make questions by looking at who, what, where, why, when, how much, and so on. We'll roll the dice, okay? Now, let's say, for example, I throw three. One, two, three. Pets. Now, each person has to ask me a question about pets. So, for example, um, when did you get a pet? Why do you want a pet? Where did you see a pet? What pet do you want? Uh, who do you know with a pet? How much does a pet cost? How long have you had a pet? What's your pet's name? Or any questions. Remember to tell them to take notes because you will ask them questions about their partners during feedback. Vacation. Okay, so I can ask, um, when is your next vacation? When is your next vacation? July 22. 22nd? Yes. Uh, so it starts July 22nd? Where will you go in vacation? Very nice. Where will you go during the vacation? I um, have vacation plan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it difficult for her. How long is vacation? The, <laughs> do you know how long it is? So it's July 22nd until? August 31st? August 30? 17th. Ah, okay. So you can say it's until August 17th. What shopping is vacation? <laughs> Will you do during the vacation? I don't know. I don't like shopping. Oh, really? Is there something you want to buy? Is there anything you want to buy? If, if I gave you... 100,001. So, sheep manan. I gave you sheep manan. What would you buy? If House. I... No, it's just... <laughs> for 100,001? Mini house. Okay, mini house. Simon says, the most famous TPR, total physical response, game, is definitely Simon Says. It is simple to play and students enjoy competing to be the last one standing. In addition, it allows them to move around, practice listening to instructions, and learn new vocabulary. How does Simon Says work? The teacher calls out and performs an action. The students then have to copy. However, students must only perform the action if it's preceded by the phrase Simon says, which adds fun to this listening activity. Students learn new vocabulary and instructions by physically acting it out. So you can say, for example, Simon says, touch your nose. And all the students have to touch their noses. Touch your ear. If they move to touch their ear, they are out. You have to say Simon says before that. Start off slow and then increase the speed so that more students fall out. You want to try and trick them to do the action without you saying Simon Says. So go faster and faster. Here are some things that you can consider to make Simon Says even better. Methodical Simon Says. Simon Says, touch your nose. Simon Says, touch your ears. Simon Says, rub your head. Simon Says, jump up. You're out. Instead of randomly calling out actions, teachers should be methodical in their approach using total physical response, getting the students to act out. You can start with some basic actions. Simon says, bend your knees. Simon says, walk in one place. Simon says, close your eyes. These are good for practicing commands, learning body parts and motor skills. In my book, 100 No Prep Activities, I give a list of 100 Simon Says activities you can do with your students. You can see it in the description below. Do everyday tasks. Simon says, wash your hands. Simon says, pet the cat. Simon says, write in your book. There are countless possibilities. Try to incorporate whatever topic you are doing in class that day. Pretend. Things don't need to be real. Students can have great fun by acting out imaginary situation. 
Simon says, paint in the sky. Simon says, blow bubbles. Simon says, fly like Superman. Emotions. Simon says, you are sad. Simon says, you are happy. Simon says, it's your birthday. Add adjectives, objects and people. Simon says, run slowly. Simon says, quickly sit down. Simon says, move your friend's book. Add possessives. Add this, that, there, here. Simon says, pick up your bag. Simon says, ride a bike. Simon says, look there, look up. Gotcha. Use colors, numbers, and sizes. Simon says, raise four fingers. Simon says, show me a blue pen. Simon says, show me your little finger. Animals and sounds. Simon says, eat like a monkey. Simon says, moo like a cow. Simon says, wag your tail like a dog. Or you can use the alphabet. Simon says, touch something starting with the letter A. She's doing the busking. <laughs> to make money, she starts busking. Group storytelling. It's exactly what it sounds like. Taking turns, students have to tell a story. Advanced students can go around in a circle and add details to the story. With intermediate students, you should guide them through the story and give them elements to focus on. A long, long time ago, there was a lady living in a forest and she had a, she had a house. What is the lady's name and what does she look like? There was a lady in a forest and her name was Ali. What does she look like? She looks like a uh -huh. monkey. <laughs> That's not very nice. Okay. Ellie lives in the forest. She looks like a monkey. What does she wear? What is she wearing? T-shirt. She's wearing a t-shirt? What color? White. A white t-shirt. In the forest, there is a monster. What does he look like? Is he big? Is he small? Small. Small, okay. How small is he? Like a small dog? Small as me? Ant. Small as an ant. Okay. How many eyes? One eye. How many legs? Four legs. And what else does he have? Two horns. Wow. Does he have a mouth? No. No mouth. What does the forest look like? Is it big and friendly? Is it dark? Does it have flowers? Does it have many trees? There is a lot of tree. Yeah. And tree have Fruit. The trees have fruit. What kind of fruit? Cherry. 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 Okay. Ellie lives in a house. What does the house look like in the forest? Mm, very small. Very small. How many rooms? One room. One room. Anything special about the house? Anything interesting? The uh, house has legs. The house has legs. How many legs? Two? Four? Wow, everybody has four legs. Does Ali have four legs? <laughs> okay, the house has four legs. Now, Ali has a problem. What is Ali's problem? She don't have any money. She doesn't have money. She doesn't have money. Okay, she doesn't have money. So what does she do? She's doing the busking. <laughs> <laughs> to make money, she starts busking. Once the students have completed their stories in their groups, place them in new groups where they will retell the story they created in their old group to the new learners. I want you to write down six questions. You will interview six different people and ask them one question, right? So you ask your friend, hi, what is your name? Write down your friend's name. And then you ask the question and write in their answers. You can ask any question. What's your favorite food? What's your hobby? Where are you from? What did you do for summer vacation? Where's your hometown? What's your favorite music? So some ideas, when is your birthday? When is your favorite day of the year? Tell me about your family. 
What is your favorite clothing? What is your perfect weekend? Your perfect holiday? What is your favorite movie? Favorite music? What celebrity do you like? What singer do you like? What music do you listen to? What makes you happy? Write down six questions. You can write the full sentence or you could just write down food or you could just write down celebrity. Do you have a pet? What is your favorite weather or season? Where do you want to travel to in the future? I want you to tell me about one friend. So you can say Eric's hobby is okay. Um, remember this apostrophe S means that it belongs to someone. So you can say Eric's hobby is Eric's favorite thing is okay. Uh, let's see. Let's start this side. My friend Young's favorite brand is Converse. Excellent. Nice. You could just say like Eric's Momo Momo. Taiwan's favorite food is pizza. Good. My friend Wonsun. Wonsun's favorite place to go is San Francisco. Very nice. It's going, guys. <laughs> the Essentials. The Essentials is a great ESL activity for the students to think about things and explain themselves. You give them a situation or item and they have to think of eight essential things needed. Some of the ideas could include a suitcase for a three-day trip, a fridge, a picnic, a survival kit, going on a date, going to the beach, doing a presentation, What's in a school bag? Going hiking. Things for a baby. In your school bag. What do you have in your school bag? One thing. What is? What do you have Notebook. in your bag? Notebook. Notebook. What do you have in your bag? In your school bag. What do you, pencil case. Pencil case. Pencil. Teacher. Teacher. Chair. Chairs. Desk. Desks. Desks. Oh. A blackboard. A blackboard. Whoa, well done. For example, if the item is a handbag, what are eight things a woman needs in her handbag? They could say uh, her wallet or driver's license, lipstick, hand cream, candy, money, wet tissues. Or if it's a situation like going on a job interview, do research on the company, dress formally, take a resume, take a notepad, arrive early, be polite, answer questions confidently. With your partner, I want you to write down, so team, boys team, girls team, I want you to write down as many. I will give you two minutes. I want you to write down in your fridge. What is fridge? Fridge? What is fridge? Nengjango. In your fridge. What is in your fridge? Quickly write down. What is in your fridge? What is a cow? What does a cow give you? Moo. A mouse. What does a mouse eat? It's yellow. But what is that? What is that? What is in the burger? What is this? A tomato. Oh. What about this one? A pep. So we've got tomato, we've got lettuce. What is this? The yellow. Three, two, one, and stop. Okay, let's see. How many? How many do you have? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 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 Six. Wow, gentlemen, well done.